Alrighty. Going to talk a little bit here about people. Just the nature of people a little bit, because there's a great story in, in all this. What you're seeing here, um, I can't probably pay the full intro, but I'll give you a bit of an outline. Um, there's a certain area of Wales with a lot of immigrants who are Italian background. And the guy who runs this little place is Italian, and his wife is a local girl <coughs> who's Welsh called Karen. Karen. Um, this is an episode of um, Kitchen Nightmares that is uploaded by Kitchen Nightmares channel. Before then, there was two different pirated copies of this uploaded, and I used to come back and, and listen to it because uh, Karen's, of <laughs> Karen's kind of funny when you hear how angry she gets and what her accent's like. It's, it's kind of friggin' hilarious, actually. I'll play it in a minute. Um, and you would hear different bits and pieces about them in the comments. So I'd come back every few months and play it. You know, I might watch it, you know, three times in a week and then come back of three months or six months later, watch it another three, four times. And um, each time there'd be more comments and there'd be people, you know, who sort of, well, these people are now here, they're now there. So, you know, tracking where Mike and Karen's further life continued on. Ultimately, this guy has been born in this area and grew up. He had a, a grandparents who migrated to that area of Wales, along with a whole ton of other Italians. Um, and, you know, who all generally settled in that area. Uh, there's quite a lot of them. And he had a fish and chip shop and he was a boxer. And ultimately, he won lottery. And he got seven hundred thousand pounds. Now you got to realise when this is filmed is like the late nineties, probably more like the early two thousands. This might be literally two thousand or sometime around then. So um, <clears throat> yeah, that's a bit relevant. But let's let's hear hear old Karen and and see how they go with the customers here. My mission this week, the fishing anchor. Owners Mike and Karen are a couple at war. I need one to let me finish! Don't you do it again? Fuck off. Their rows are legendary. Fuck off. No, I haven't got a bloody house. I'm not being called that. They're driving the locals away. Oh, yeah. What I've heard is a bit of a tosser. I'm turning marriage counsellor. You can't run around like fucking Shrek in a frock. You've got to have some form of control. Are the Shrek in a frock. <laughs> Uh, I just love hearing this uh, this accent, so uh, this let's week, just go again. Anchor. Owners Mike and Karen are a couple at war. I didn't want to let me finish! Don't you do it again! Fuck off. Their rows are legendary. No, I haven't got a bloody house. I'm not being called that! They're driving the locals away. Oh, yeah. What I've heard is a bit of a tosser. Anyway, long and short of it is, Gordon Ramsay helps them get all of the uh, the the shit show under on, on the road. Uh, they got about three waitresses there, um, and uh, ultimately, uh, the waitresses are great at waiting. But as you can ma uh, imagine, from uh, Karen, oh Karen, there's not very good at um, dealing with customers, and so she makes them all upset. Well, long and short of it is, she's you know. Calm down and stop running around like Shrek in a frock. <laughs> and, um, and you know, they sort of got the business back on the road again. See, with some of these winnings that he got out of his lottery, he sold that fish and chip shop and he bought this place uh, when it came up for sale because he, you know, he thought of himself as a bit of a chef. Trouble is, he's got a whole heap of home cook recipes which are you know, not exactly designed for speed, and there's no real theme, there's Indian stuff, there's Italian, there's this, there's that, there's all the stuff, so in the end, Gordon changes the, the what's his name, to make a bunch of simple Italian stuff, a lot of pasta dishes, you know, meatballs, uh, and, and simplify the menu to more simpler Italian food, um, but that's all sort of by the wayside, because we're talking about human nature here, and ultimately, um, what happened is, it all went good. Karen calmed down within 
I think it was two years or less, she turned into a bitch. Uh, within about a year, they'd driven away a lot of the customers, and, and basically somewhere around the three-year or five-year mark, I think it might have been the five-year mark, they sold it all off. After two years of good business, and you know one or two years or three years of shit business, um, they sold it off. And you say, well, that's the end of that. Well, actually, no, it's not. Because he has still had a lot of his money, and he also had a lot of his dreams still. So they went to England, and they found another pub, and they bought that. Rinse, lather, repeat, just like it says on the shampoo bottle. They went in there, they bought that one, and they opened it up. <clears throat> And uh took no time at all, you know, before Karen started at everybody again. And, uh, you know, that one lasted a few years. I think it only lasted about two years tops or something. Um, and so they sold that one. Was that that? Did he, did he go back and get another job? Did they, I don't know, move to the Caribbean, move to Spain, as a lot of, um, you know, British do? Maybe they went to, no, no. They then went and bought a third pub. Yeah. <laughs> now, this one apparently is an area where it's it was actually a fairly cheap pub because it's not an area where... <sighs> Housing is a, you know, or any of these sort of buildings are very high priced. And uh, they entered the third one. Still using what was left of his winnings and what was left of the sale from the second one. Uh, and uh, yeah, same thing again. They opened that up straight away and they had a pathetically small uh, menu, I think, and... and you know, on the second pub, I think his food would be good some days and, and shit other days. And, and then I think in the third pub, the menu narrowed it anyway. It doesn't matter because Karen was yelling at everybody. And uh, and that was the last I heard of them before they wiped out the pirated copies that they had this third pub. They could have shit up on that one and, and then gone and ran for a managed position of a, another pub. You know, or or gone partnership with someone else while Karen yelled and screamed and drove that one into the ground. Who knows? They could be on the fourth pub. The point is that after a fish and chip shop where he won the lottery, they've gone through this one pub, pissed everybody off, Gordon straightened everything out, and it's gone good for another two years before Karen stuffed it all up again. <clears throat> then, second pub, shit that one up. Third pub, apparently people in the comments had gone there and she's given everyone a blast uh, for almost no reason at all when they come in for lunch or whatever. And, uh, you know, that was just headed the same way. Some people made a mention of, of this, Karen's got a self-esteem problem deep down and that can't be fixed and therefore she's poisoning everyone around her. But I want to make a bit of a wider point whether that's true or not, which it probably is. I want to make a bit of a wider point that there's a lot of times where there's people who do not learn from their mistakes or they're creatures of habit and they go straight back into the old thing. They fix it all up, they get it all sorted. And then they go back into the same tired old bullshit that ran them aground. And it's like they either emotionally can't control themselves or they forget everything they've learned as soon as there's a bit of, um, as soon as the heat's on and they're panicked a bit and it, it just sort of all, you know, turns to shit. And, and there's a lot of a concept that really this was his idea, not hers, and that could be a big part of it is that she's just doing it because she's the wife and she has to. Not because she actually wanted to have anything more than a fish and chip shop. If she even wanted that. But ultimately, you know, they're just sort of... Yeah. They've uh, just continued down the same path and, and consequently, based on the price 
that they're paying for these pubs, they're slowly getting cheaper, well, fairly quickly getting cheaper each time. I think they're just blowing through all these, um, these lottery winnings while trying to play chef while she's out there abusing the shit out of all the customers. There's some people that learn from mistakes, and the best people are those are people who look at other people's mistakes and learn from them, or assess the situation and don't make the mistake. Then there's people who make the mistake and learn from having made it and change their ways. Because that's the whole point of learning from a mistake, is that you change your ways. And then there's other people that just, like, it's like the fucking merry-go-round. They just repeat, 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 repeat. And these people, you just, you're not going to get anywhere with them. And never mind you getting anywhere with them, they're not going to get anywhere in their life. So, yeah. With these people, things don't get better in their life. And they're the direct cause of it because they keep repeating mistakes. And uh, I'm seeing this shit more and more these days, you know. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, something in future, you know. Something that I am not a total expert on. Uh, I've made a horrendous amount of mistakes on. I've even made videos whinging about these things not realizing the mistakes i was making but it's all starting to come together now um and uh you know it's generally when you want things to work you try harder and this is one of these things where <laughs> the harder you try the less it works and and that really just blows straight back in the face of Every other principle that I've known to get anywhere in a job, get promoted, get plenty of money, working long overtime, you know, it's always a case of putting more effort, not realizing that putting in more effort was sort of stuffing me up here. Um, but um, yeah, it's interesting the way human nature works and... Um, you know, it's good to be able to look at yourself from a third-party perspective and see that maybe you are repeating uh, mistakes. And if you're, you know, not getting anywhere in life, like, uh, you might be one of those people. I've also noticed, also, that some of the people who complain the most that everybody else is getting ahead and they're not, when you actually solidly look at it, they're the people who turn up last to work. They're the first to leave after standing around the clock off machine for fucking 10 minutes. Uh, and they're also put in the most shit-ass job, the lowest levels of effort. Often don't finish things off properly, dump jobs on other people. And then they turn around and say, well, how come things aren't working out for me? How come this one got promoted, that one got promoted? A lot of these things require a good look in the mirror that you're not repeating the same mistakes or that, really speaking, you're not getting anywhere because you're ultimately a lazy fucker. I mean, that's just as simple as that. Um, you know, and... Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of people who don't like to hear that and they're always the, the socialists and all those who are always complaining that everyone else is getting ahead. You find they're the most bloody useless bastards when it comes to getting anything done. You know, and uh -huh, it's all unfair, it's all favouritism, it's all this, it's all that. And it's like, and you're the laziest bastard this side of Mars, you know. <laughs> and they can't understand how they got there, but they're not willing to take a look at themselves. 